Hello and welcome back to Prepare for Birth with Dr. Marta Perez. Today we're going to discuss 10 things that you need to know about preeclampsia. Actually, we're only going to discuss the first five today and we're going to discuss the second five next week. So be sure to hit subscribe if you're not already so you can be alerted to all of my educational content related to reproductive health and pregnancy. Let's get started. watched some scary scenes on Downton Abbey. Maybe you had a family or friend who had a problem with their blood pressure towards the end of their pregnancy. Or maybe you've heard or read about how problems with blood pressure in pregnancy are a leading cause of maternal mortality worldwide and in the United States. No matter how you've heard about hypertensive disorders in pregnancy, I want you to feel empowered with knowledge about these disorders that helps you feel safe and comfortable and able to monitor for them in your pregnancy. I'm going to try to distill my years of education and knowledge about this topic into a few short minutes and 10 easy to understand principles. I would love to hear your questions and comments down in the comments section and I'll respond to as many as I can. The first thing before we get started is to explain that the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy are actually a big umbrella consisting of multiple different disorders and syndromes that are related to each other. You have gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, preeclampsia with severe features, without severe features, severe gestational hypertension, eclampsia, and HELP syndrome. There's a ton under this big umbrella, and that's why I use the terms hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. It's to kind of group them together and understand everything, and then we'll parse out some of the different things as we talk about it as well. These hypertensive disorders of pregnancy are the new onset of elevated blood pressures above 140 over 90 is the number that present 20 weeks or later in pregnancy, but most commonly towards the very end of pregnancy or postpartum. If you are wondering, well, I have high blood pressure outside of pregnancy, that's called chronic hypertension. It's a little bit different, but there are some considerations with chronic hypertension and the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, but the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy are something that's caused by the pregnancy itself. Chronic hypertension is something someone may have outside of pregnancy and then carries with them into pregnancy. Thing you need to know about the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy numbers one through five. Let's get started. Number one, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy are common. Estimates of the prevalence of the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy are from six to 17% of first time pregnant people. It's only about 3% of repeat pregnant people. So it's definitely more common for someone's first pregnancy. And most people who get diagnosed with a hypertensive disorder of pregnancy are healthy and normal and didn't have any risk factors. But there are some risk factors that can raise the chances that you will have the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. And those are in this box I'm gonna list here. So I don't want you to think you have to have one of these things to have a hypertensive disorder of pregnancy, just that it's gonna be more common if you do. With how common hypertensive disorders of pregnancy are, I want you to know that that's about a one out of five to one out of seven people. And I don't want it to catch you off guard. I wanna empower you with information so that instead of being completely thrown off when you had envisioned uh, you know, your due date and when you would go into labor and then you suddenly find out you have a hypertensive disorder of pregnancy and your doctor recommends induction, instead of the, I, this is totally out of left field, I would have never expected this, now you can say, okay, well this is one of the known things that can happen in pregnancy and although I didn't want it to happen, now that we're here, I'm empowered by Dr. Perez's knowledge. I mentioned that it's common not to scare you into thinking it will happen to you, but to give you the knowledge and the expectation that you know what to expect and that this is something that is a possibility. As an OBGYN doctor, I truly manage the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy every single day at work. Number two, the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy are actually the disorders of pregnancy and postpartum. So one of the mysterious things about all of these disorders in pregnancy with high blood pressure is that we know that the underlying cause is hormones and specific chemical messengers created by the placenta that interact with and negatively affect the maternal 
small blood vessels and organ systems leading to the effects of the high blood pressure in pregnancy. So one of the puzzling things is why does it present for the very first time in the postpartum period when the placenta has been gone for days or weeks? And we don't really have a great explanation for that, but I want you to know that although the most common time to have a hypertensive disorder of pregnancy is at the end of a pregnancy, it can also present for the first time earlier on in the pregnancy, anytime after 20 weeks, and in the postpartum period, even if you didn't have it in pregnancy. Thing to know number three, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy are a spectrum. So I mentioned a lot of things in the beginning that are under the umbrella of the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, but there's also a range of severity. There's very mild gestational hypertension, which only has some elevated blood pressures, and they don't have any other effects on any maternal organs. We do recommend delivery once term is reached, so at about 37 weeks, or if it's diagnosed after that, delivery right away, because we don't want it to progress to the more serious disorders. And then we have some of the more serious things. Preeclampsia actually means high blood pressures and protein in the urine. And it used to be one of the most common ways we could identify these disorders was by the protein in the urine. Over time, we've seen the amount of protein in the urine isn't as important as some of the other things. So preeclampsia without severe features is just those low level elevations in the blood pressure plus protein in the urine. And the delivery recommendations are the same. Then we get to severe features. These include laboratory abnormalities, urine abnormalities, and symptoms a person's experience, which is number four, so I'll get to that. Four, so I'll get to that in a second. But the more severe features warrants an earlier delivery and other treatment. Then there are the really severe ones. Eclampsia is experiencing a seizure, and the HELP syndrome is a experience of the whole body that really affects the liver and the clotting factors and the platelets. Again, those are the most serious types. So when this is a spectrum, we wanna prevent it from going down the spectrum. But the other interesting <laughs> and mysterious thing about these disorders is that some people present for the very first time with a very severe part of the syndrome. For other people, they present with something more mild and everyone is a little bit different and the treatments and the recommendations may change a little based on where you fall in that. Number four, I want you to know the signs and the symptoms of the hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. So I alluded to blood pressure changes. If you've normally had normal blood pressure, then new blood pressure elevations of either 140 on the top number or 90 on the bottom number in pregnancy would be a starting sign. If it happens on more than one occasion, that's gonna start you off on the diagnosis. Blood pressures can also get severe. 160 over 110 is something that's really concerning and warrants to call your doctor right away. There are other laboratory abnormalities. Your doctor would look for those. They involve both a blood test and a test for protein in the urine. But then there are some symptoms that I want you to be aware of as well, because that may be the first thing you feel. One of the symptoms of severe preeclampsia can be a really bad headache that's new and doesn't go away. And it doesn't feel like kind of a normal tension headache or a normal migraine if you're someone who gets migraines. And not every headache is gonna be a sign of preeclampsia. It's actually very normal to get headaches, especially in the second trimester of pregnancy. But the combination of having high blood pressures and a headache is concerning. Seeing big black spots in your vision, also something to talk to your doctor about. And then some of the other things are really bad pain in the epigastric region, which is kind of right under where the rib bones come together, or really bad pain on the upper right side, under the right upper ribs. And so those things are something that warrants talking to your doctor about. Of course, there are a lot of causes for pains like that. Heartburn can cause a little bit of pain there. Your baby kicking over on the right side can cause a little bit of pain there. But pain that's concerning you have to use a little bit of your intuition no this is new and different for me and talk to your doctor about it if you experience any of those swelling can definitely be a part of the hypertensive disorders in pregnancy but they're not a part of the diagnostic criteria and that's because swelling especially of the feet and the legs and the hands can be completely normal in pregnancy Someone can have swelling and not have a hypertensive disorder of pregnancy. So it's something to kind of think about and that adds to our clinical suspicion as doctors. Like when I have a family member tell me I've never seen her this swollen, it raises my suspicion, but not all swelling is dangerous, but it's just something that we keep an eye on. Number five, this one's a little frustrating and that's why I'm ending today's episode on it. 
The fifth thing I want you to know about the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy are that they're a little mysterious. Actually, I think they're a lot mysterious. As I alluded to multiple times in this video, each person can present in a totally different way with a hypertensive disorder in pregnancy. And whereas some of the severe outcomes are more rare, they are something that we see. We also don't know the specific causes of the hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Like I mentioned, there's multiple chemical messengers involved that are mediated by the relationship between the placenta and the maternal organ systems. And this complex play between these two systems of the placenta that's nurturing the baby and the maternal system that should be supporting the fetus and why they go awry is really not well understood. And like I mentioned before too, why do some people present with really severe types of preeclampsia or hypertensive disorders in like the late second trimester or early third trimester and other people go their whole pregnancy with nothing and then present a week postpartum with these problems? We don't really know. And so I know that makes it frustrating for me to tell you, I wish I could just list off A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, but it's one of the things that's fascinating, but also frustrating as an OB doctor, because we want the highest level of health. I want to be able to tell patients definitive answers. And sometimes what we're left with is, I don't know why this happened to you. And I don't know why it happened to you one way and it happened to the patient in the room next to you a totally different way. That's just the normal when we're talking about hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Again, I said this at the beginning and I'm gonna just stress it a lot. This is not to make you scared of these hypertensive disorders. These are my bread and butter. They're what I do day in and day out. I protect people from having bad outcomes by giving them the highest level of care, preventing their blood pressures from being too high preventing them from going on to having a seizure and doing the right things. Sometimes that involves things like preterm birth. It really often involves things like an induction of labor you maybe weren't expecting. I'm gonna wrap up this episode. I could probably talk for hours about this, but we're not gonna talk for hours. <laughs> and next week, we're gonna cover the next five things that I need you to know about preeclampsia. And those involve what the treatments are, how to prevent it, what's the likelihood of having it again if you had it the first time. So stay tuned. Again, I welcome your questions. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I will educate you every Friday with my YouTube videos. You can check me out on Instagram. I have tons of other reproductive health stuff over there. And thank you so much for joining me. Take care, y'all.